Okay, so let's uh, resume our discussion on renormalization group equations. And uh, till now we have seen how the coupling constant uh, changes as you change the renormalization um, scale mu. Okay, that's something we saw earlier. And we had defined beta tilde, which is a function of lambda r, okay, and epsilon only in um, when you are away from four dimensions. So we took d equal to four minus two epsilon. Okay. And in MS bar scheme, it depends only on lambda r and epsilon. In general uh, scheme, it will depend also on MR. Okay. And mu also explicitly. But in this case, the mu dependence is implicit in this scheme. And this was defined to be d lambda r over d mu. Okay. Let's see what else we had done earlier. Yeah. And also we saw that um, the contribution to beta tilde or the beta function comes from only the single pole terms. Okay. So let's see what this A1 is. A1 is um, here. So this Z lambda, which is the renormalization constant for the coupling constant, here I have written not in terms of, not as an expansion in lambda r, but rather I have collected terms according to the um, order of poles. So A1 has all the uh, terms which give you a single pole. Okay, so this A1 co uh, gets contributions from all orders in perturbation theory. Okay, so when you do a two-loop calculation, you also generate double pole and a single pole. So that is also included in here. So there are lambda r terms, lambda r square terms, lambda r cube terms, and so forth. Same for this. And we saw that because of this relation, the beta function gets contributions only from the single pole terms. Okay, and the higher order pole terms, their coefficients do not contribute. Okay. Uh, now I want to look at how the uh, mass parameter should be changed when you change the scale mu. Okay. And I should remind again that mu is not a physical parameter in your theory because you see that is not something present in the Bayer Lagrangian. So that cannot be a parameter of your theory and it cannot be related to any of the physical scales in the theory or physical scales in some experiment. Okay, if you are doing some scattering, mu cannot uh, be related to any of the scales in, in, in the scattering experiment. Okay, the incoming momenta, outgoing momenta, whatever. Okay, because that's, that's simply not present and what we are trying to learn here is that if we were to change mu, how I should change the, the coupling constants, the renormalized coupling constants, such that the theory remains unchanged. Okay, meaning such, uh, the change should be such that in the renormalized couplings and the renormalized mass parameters such that the bare parameters do not change. Okay, so now before I move on to look at how the renormalized mass should change with the uh, scale mu, I want to make a correction. There is a mistake I have done earlier, which is giving a wrong result for um, the beta function by a factor of two. I'll just tell you what that mistake is. Okay, so let's go to this. Um, other notebook and this is okay let's see where it is 
I think somewhere here. Just a second. So I should go to where I was doing renormalization of five four theory. Now here you see this um, vertex is of order lambda r square, okay? Because when you have done the written the uh, action in terms of renormalized fields and parameters, this is a term which we you produce, okay? That's that has an explicit lambda r here, and because of these z's, you get another factor of lambda r. I mean, it starts at order lambda r, this, this piece, so that's why it's lambda r square. So we have this vertex. Now, we started calculating these um, two-point function and four-point function and renormalizing them. And somewhere here, it went wrong. Yeah. I hope I'm not losing, yes. So you see, I'm looking at this uh, renormalization of four point function, okay? Here, so I calculated all these three uh, diagrams at one loop and these had some poles here, which we wanted to cancel and that for that I need to adjust the z's, the z that appears in here in this vertex. Okay, so I wrote the uh, expression of this four point function where I'm using the counter term. And you see after writing all these factors, after counting all this, I multiplied by one over two factorial. Okay, and the reason why I multiplied by this one two factorial uh, was the following. So if you recall how our uh, Green's functions are written. I'm just writing the numerator part. We had learned in uh, this in the first course. So you have. Okay, I'm just writing Green's functions in the um, moment uh, phys um, coordinate space. Okay, here in this case it will be four, but I'm just writing generic one. Okay, this is what you get in the numerator. And it is basically this which you are expanding here and, and writing. This is what gave you the Feynman diagrams. So now here you see our H interaction or HI is um, contains this term which you had in the action. Where is that? Okay, it is way behind. Yeah, here. Okay, so HI will contain all these terms starting from here to this last one, okay? Because these all are having coupling constants in them, okay? So that is what enters. Now, the mistake that I made, uh, it was a slip of mind, was the following. Where did that go? Sorry, lost track. Yeah, here. 
so when i put hi okay here that those all those terms which i was telling when they are here and i expand so when i expand the exponential the first term is 1 okay then the next term will be uh, th this exactly this thing in the argument okay then the next one will be the square of this times 1 over 2 factorial then the third term would be cube of this times 1 over 3 factorial and this is that 1 over 2 factorial and 1 over 3 factorial that is what comes here usually okay that is what i was saying but note that when i expand to the first order it will be 1 over 1 factorial not 2 factorial 1 over 1 factorial times this piece but this piece includes this uh, this vertex which is already order lambda r square okay so even though i have a term which is order lambda r square okay you do not do not get that 1 over 2 factorial okay this would have been true pro if the word if none of the terms in hi would would be uh, lambda r square if they were all linear in lambda r then only when you go to the next order term you get lambda r square and you bring 1 over 2 factorial okay so that's the mistake i should not have included this one so this should go away okay if this goes away then this should go away and then z lambda should become 3 over uh, 32 pi square okay so let me try to make that change sorry so this should become 32 pi square doesn't it go away okay so this is a correction that I wanted to make now let's return to our um, discussion on how MR changes with mu in 5 4 theory or I mean, the discussion will be general, but let's see. Okay, so back to business. Hmm. So our question is, Did I give an expression for this one? No. So you should um, exercise. You should check that you get um, beta tilde lambda r epsilon in 5 4 theory to be minus 2 epsilon lambda r. This is this term plus 2 um, maybe I'll just give you the answer plus 3 over 16 pi square lambda r square okay so all you have to do is take the derivative of a1 and that derivative of a1 you can find from the uh, z of lambda that I have just corrected okay so that's the beta function in 5 4 theory Let's go to um, the question of how MR changes with mu r with mu. Okay, and you already know why we are doing this. Okay, so as before we want to keep the bare mass parameter fixed as I change mu meaning this derivative should be 0 and again it's customary to put a mu here okay 
which is same as writing mu d over d mu z m times m r. That's hopeless. And this should be equal to zero. Okay. I have to stop recording because it doesn't work.